Good morning. Y'all are kind of quiet this morning. I know. <laughs> Usually it's like buzzing in here. You must have shopped yourself silly over the tax-free weekend. I know. That's what happened. Let me give you some announcements. Um, first of all, if you have a prayer request, if you'll raise your hand, one of the ushers will get you a card to fill out for us to give prayer to the prayer team and for here. <laughs> Have some announcements for from Katie for coming up back to school blessings on August the 17th. Students of all ages are encouraged to bring their backpacks for a special blessing at both the 9-11 a.m. services. Also on that same day, rising third graders will receive their Bibles on promotion. This is also promotion Sunday. They will receive their Bibles on August 17th at both 9 and 11 a.m. services. Uh, make sure Katie has your, your third graders' full name prior to that service. And then coming up, August the 24th is the ice cream social from 5.30 to 7 here in the Family Life Center. Uh, bring your best dessert or ice cream to share. That's always a whole lot of fun. I hope. And, and all the people who are visitors are always invited to come and not bring anything but your appetite. So just remember that. Also... Coming up in just about two weeks again is a Bible study on that uh, is on uh, going to touch on things like financial planning and stewardship, and that is coming up. And if you want more information, see Jimmy Fowler, who's up here somewhere, up there behind the drummer drums. Also, there's some more disciple Bible studies are going to crank back up here pretty soon. I noticed that uh, those um, I don't think they made it into the bulletin yet, but that's coming up. Uh, if you'd like to know more about that, you could probably ask uh, Katie Moore. Is she here? There's flyers are back there on the table. Okay, flyers are back there about that. The Disciple Bible Studies, we're going to have one and two this year. And we're going to start a new one, and there'll be a two for those who finish one. And then also something that did not make it to the bulletin, did not repeat again for some reason, is the um, reminder about the, the scouts that are going to be, in, the new scout troop is going to be introduced to the congregation. The scouts will be here at both 9 and 11 o'clock service, I think. I know for certain they'll be here. I'm just not sure if it's the whole scout troop at both services. I know the scout uh, leaders will be here at both services. They will. That is on August the 24th during the worship times. So just a, rem a reminder of all these things that are coming up in the life of the church. You'll see more about them in the bulletins and announcements on church-wide email. All right? Okay. Uh, and one just scheduling note, please note that there is a wedding this afternoon in the sanctuary at 4 o'clock. All right. Let's begin our worship. Will you stand and sing with us?
loves me, this I know For the Bible tells me so Little ones to Him belong They are weak, but He is strong Hallelujah bow your heads and pray with me. Heavenly Father, your grace is so amazing, and we are so undeserving, and yet you pour out your love and your mercy and your grace over us anyway, and we are so grateful. Help us to seek you with all that we do and glorify you with all that we do. Focus our hearts and minds now for worship, and let our thoughts and our praises please you. In your precious name, amen. Would you turn and greet your neighbor and children? Come forward for the children's sermon. morning. How is everybody? Okay. What time of year is it? What are you getting ready to do? Go back to school. Do you need a lot of supplies to go back to school? What do you need? So a lot of stuff, right? You have a book bag full of stuff to go back to school, right? Well, do you know that God gives us a whole bunch of supplies, but it's really not that much to carry around like is in our book bag for school? How does he give us a whole bunch of supplies that's really easy to carry around? What is our God from him? Is it all in one book? Yeah. So we might need just as many supplies and to need to know just as many things to follow God, but he gives it to us really simply in one book called the Bible. So as we're going back to school, I think it's a good reminder to know that we do need a lot of school supplies to go back to school. We do need to be ready and prepared, just like we need to be ready and prepared to follow Jesus. But we, all we need is this book that's right up here to follow him. All the school supplies we need for him are in that one book that's really easy to carry around. And since you need so many school supplies for school, we do something special every year at our church. What do we do the Sunday before you go back to school? School. You remember when you all come to the front of the church with me? What do we do? It's called Back to School Blessings. And this year, you're going to get to bring those backpacks 
that we just mentioned. And you don't have to put all your school supplies in them if you don't want to, because I know that might be kind of heavy. But in a few Sundays on the 17th, you can bring your book bags with you, and we will do a special blessing of the bags for our back to school blessings this year. And that'll help you have a great start to the school year. Does that sound like fun? We all remember to do that in a few weeks? Bring your book bags? Yeah? Okay. Let's say a prayer before we go this morning. Will you repeat after me? Dear God, thank you for giving us the supplies we need to follow you. Bless us as we get ready to go back to school this year. Amen. Let me give you, a, I know some of you all have been asking, I'll give you a report on Brenda came through her uh, surgery, okay, and finally got home on Wednesday, and so she's uh, going to have three or four weeks of recovery. I appreciate your continued prayers for her. Let us bow our heads and pray. Oh Lord, in your mercy, hear the prayers of these uh, people. Oh God, you call us sons and daughters and you created us to be your people and to be a new people and we come this day and praise your name and we're reminded that you give up to us day by day the goodness of the earth. And yet we must confess this day, oh God, that we're often reluctant to share what we've been given with others. You have given us an abundance and yet, we're not careful with it. Sometimes we let it go to waste. For those times where we've been selfish with your gifts, Lord, have mercy on us. Where we fail to be good stewards, not multiplying our resources for the good of others, forgive us. Oh Lord, pour out upon us again a fresh gift of your Holy Spirit. Help us to be generous. Help us to be healers. Inspire us to be peacemakers. Oh Lord, we pray this day that you'd give guidance to the leaders in this nation and other nations around the world. That they may seek not war but peace and seek the common good for all your people. This day, oh Lord, we pray that you'd receive into your care all those that we have put on our prayer list in our bulletins. Uh, all those that we name in our hearts now. And we especially pray for a speedy recovery from concussion for Samantha. We pray, O oh Lord, for anyone this day who wrestles with illnesses of body, mind, or spirit. We lift them up before you, O oh Lord. O oh God, hear us and answer us. For we pray in the name of Christ our Lord, who taught us to pray with these words. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Matthew, Gospel, chapter 14, beginning at 13. This is probably a familiar passage to you. Give attention to the reading of God's Holy Word. Now when Jesus heard what had happened, he withdrew by boat privately to a solitary place. But the crowds heard this and they followed him. 
on foot from the towns. And so when Jesus landed on the other shore, there was a large crowd had already gathered. And he had compassion on them, and he healed their sick. And as evening approached, the disciples came to him and they said, this is a remote place and it's getting late. We need to send the crowds away so they can go to the villages and buy themselves some food. And Jesus replied to the disciples, they do not need to go away. You give them something to eat. And they replied, we have here only five loaves of bread and two fish. And Jesus said to them, Bring them here to me. And then he directed the people to sit down on the grass and taking the five loaves and the two fish and looking up to heaven, he gave thanks, he broke the loaves, and then he gave them to the disciples. And the disciples then gave them to the people. And they all ate and were satisfied. And the disciples picked up 12 basketfuls of broken pieces that were left over. The number of those who ate was about 5,000 men besides women and children. This is the Word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Uh, Lord, we thank you for your word and your continuing presence with us through the power of the Holy Spirit. Guide us now as we seek to understand this miracle and how it applies to us in our time. We pray in Christ's name. Amen. <clears throat> Did you know that this miracle is actually the only miracle that's recorded in all four Gospels? Now, there's miracles recorded in all the different Gospels, but not... They're all different ones. This one is recording all four Gospels. In seminary, they teach you that when something's repeated like that, that means you need to pay attention to it. Okay? And when you count the number of women and children that were probably there, the real number was probably more like 20,000 people, not five. Now, a lot of people want to explain away miracles, okay, in our time. And some have said that people were so moved by the generosity of the little boy who had the fish and the loaf and his satchel that they then brought forth their own food and everybody shared and, ha and was happy. And that, and that sounds pretty reasonable, I guess. Others have suggested that the meal was symbolic and spiritual that each was renewed by receiving a small fragment like we do with communal bread. And if you listen carefully to the words of the Scripture, you'll see it did have some overtones, didn't it, of taking the bread and breaking it and sharing of communion. The trouble with these explanations, I think, and other explanations is that they miss something I think very important, and namely that this is a peasant's meal. This was a typical meal around the shores of Lake Galilee for those peasants, bread and fish. You see, I've always thought that if Jesus was going to produce a miracle, it should be like cooked dishes, luxurious meats and fruits, uh, great drinks, you know, and all that. And so when we have this kind of a miracle, it doesn't want to fit in our minds. And so we want to explain it away and say, oh, it couldn't have been a miracle. Now, because if Jesus had done a miracle, you know, that all had stakes. But the thing is, is that people miss the point when they think like that. The way they should think is that Jesus was providing what people needed there, just what they needed, just when they needed it. And, it, it's, and it's in the present moment. The miracle's done within the present moment. It's as if on our Lake Day, 20,000 people showed up and... <laughs> and if he did, Eric and Katie would panic. <laughs> but that the hamburgers and the hot dogs never gave out, you see. This is a miracle that directs us to the present. It helps us to understand that God's providence, God's care to us, uh, is, is there for our basic needs, our basic necessities. Now, it's not a banquet, but it is nonetheless a nourishing meal. It is just what they needed. Just what they needed, just when they needed it. 
And that is the point, I believe, of the Scripture today, and it's the point that I want to try to make, is that Jesus will provide just what you need, just when you need it. No more, no less. God's grace is always sufficient. Remember that. God's grace is always sufficient. Just enough, just when you need it. A hug just when you need it. A smile just when you need it. A pat on the back just when you need it. A simple meal just when you need it. Whatever is needed, it comes in the right measure, just in time, just enough. And it's always very welcome. It's, it's, it's always welcome. I want to tell you a story. <clears throat> when uh, we were in a church charge and <clears throat> our funds were running very low. We'd had an experience where we had to spend some money that uh, was unexpected. And we really weren't sure how we were going to pay our bills. And I went to the post office to gather up the church's mail and we shared the mail with the post office in that particular uh, location. And there was, a, there was a letter that had on it to the pastor. It had no uh, return address stamped on the, on the letter. The stamp on the stamp was even one of these that just says stamped at a postal facility. It didn't say what postal facility. I opened it up, and in it was a $500 money order. A $500 money order payable to me. Had no return address, no explanation, nothing. It's just one of these nondescript postal orders for $500. Well... You know, we, what, what would every one of us do? Every one of us, first of all, be skeptical, right? We'd just be skeptical. What is, this is probably fake. It's probably one of these things, if I cash it, some telemarketer will drive me crazy now for the next six months, right? <laughs> Calling me about something. But no, it was real. Verifiable. And I received $500. Now we begin the second thing that most of us would do. We try to figure out who gave it to us, who sent that money to us. And so we started, you know, dropping little hints around, seeing if somebody, because I have found out to use it when somebody gives you a gift, they, they kind of want you to know they gave you the gift, right? You know this. Nobody seemed to have a clue. We never did figure it out. We had no clue who it was, where it came from, if it was from people in our church then, or from whoever it was. But the thing was, when it's all said and done, the lesson I learned was that God's grace is always sufficient. Just what you need, just when you needed it. It was exactly what I needed to cover us for that month. And it came. And that's the way God works in our lives. You see, this story is more than about 20,000 hungry peasants on a Galilean seashore. This story is about a world of hungry people. Uh, people thirsting for a better life, people hungry for an encouraging word, uh, people who are anxiously uh, uh, waiting the kingdom because of all the things that are going on in their lives today. But it's important for us to understand that the Lord often works through our troubles by simply stripping away certain things that we find that are cherished possessions to show us better treasures of love and grace. And it's important for us to know that in every storm of affliction, we have the assurances of our Lord that God has a good purpose in view for us and that God will supply us just what we need just when we need it. Now another very important thing in that scripture I think is oftentimes overlooked is the lesson that Jesus tries to impart to his disciples. He tries to actively involve his disciples because we've all been called to be God's instruments in meeting the needs of others. We're called to share each other's burdens, to help with each other. And Jesus knows that his followers... And you, as followers, have the same access to kingdom power through the Holy Spirit as Jesus has. And you have it here and now. 
And I think this is seen when, when Jesus, when the disciples bring Jesus this problem, uh, Jesus doesn't give them the answer. He says, you do it. Uh, you give them something neat. Because Jesus knows they have within them the power to solve the problem. They have within them the power to be a help. And so it's important for us to understand that our active participation with whatever Jesus is doing, our offering of what we bring, our offering of help, even if it's only small, a small thing, uh, it's important. Our active participation to use what we have, even when we seem so inadequate to the task in front of us, uh, our active participation to bring what we have uh, to do for, for the answer for the Lord saying, you give them something to eat. You give them what they need. You take care of this situation. Reminds us and should encourage us that we are to offer ourselves for daily work in the kingdom. Now after those many had eaten... The scripture says they were satisfied and it says that the disciples picked up 12 baskets of broken pieces. Now, I want you to see something about that. I've often thought and thought in terms that that meant there was this wonderful abundance. But really, if you think about it this way, 12 baskets... 12 baskets. Just think about 12 baskets lined up here. 12 baskets after 20,000 hungry people suggests to me something different. It doesn't suggest an overabundance. It suggests to me a narrow margin. Probably comparable to a couple packs of hot dogs and buns left after a large family reunion. This further suggests to me that God not only makes sufficient provision, but if we engage in greed or waste, now listen, God makes sufficient provision, but if we engage in greed or waste, then others will go without. You see, I believe that God sees the abundance of what He has created as something sufficient. And even though we stand amidst this rich bounty, like the disciples, we often can't see it. And often we question, can we really do anything? And I think Christ clearly answers us by directing us the way He directed the disciples when He said, bring what you have here to Me. Bring what you have here to me. If you're feeling insufficient, or you're feeling overwhelmed, if you're feeling that you can't accomplish what it is God wants you to accomplish, you need to bring it to Jesus. Because apart from God, we can truly do nothing. But with God, we can do greater things than these. And so the, the, the key is to bring what you have the willingness to bring what you have and to bring it to Jesus. The bounty of the earth stands ready, I believe, as a witness to God's love for us. And if people will bring to God and listen to His voice on how best to distribute the bounty of the earth, everyone will have what they sufficiently need. The world would not be a place of hunger and disease and poverty. God's grace is sufficient. We must commit it to the purposes of God. And we must bring it to God and allow God to multiply and to use what we bring for the sufficiency of the earth. Now likewise, this is a story also about our spirit, spirits. Uh, this is a story about the spiritual bounty that has been given to us in the Word of God. 
You see, once again, it's the same concept. If people will draw upon the spiritual bounty that is available to each person in faith, everyone would be satisfied. But for this spiritual bounty and the physical bounty I've been talking about, it will not be invested, it will not be used, it will not be sufficient unless we turn to the Lord Jesus Christ. That's the key in this lesson. You have within you the power to do something. Go and do. Now, we can either say, like the disciples did, we don't have anything. Or we can realize that we do and go and do. Either way, Jesus says, bring it to me. Let me bless your efforts. Let me bless what it is we have. And watch me multiply it. It can be multiplied. It's amazing how it can be multiplied and how often it is multiplied when we bring it to Christ Jesus. When humankind understands that God's grace is sufficient, that the bounty of the earth is sufficient, that this abundance that God has given us, both physically and spiritually, is sufficient, we will be able to turn it into something that makes a difference either in a life of a person or in a life of a town or a nation or the world. Listen one more time. Bring what you have to me means to me to seek the kingdom first and all these other things will be given to us. And my prayer is that you'll come to trust the Lord in every aspect of your life and that you'll bring to Him what you have, even though it seems not sufficient. And let God give you just enough. I saw a little poem I want to share with you. It, it was called Enough. It said, enough happiness to keep you sweet. Enough trials to keep you strong. Enough sorrow to keep you human. Enough hope to keep you happy. Enough failure to keep you humble. Enough success to keep you eager. Enough friends to give you comfort. Enough wealth to meet your needs. Enough enthusiasm to make you look forward to tomorrow. And enough determination to make each day better than the day before. Enough. I think that's a good point. Remember, God provides just what you need, just when you need it. No sooner than that. And, no, and grace is sufficient. Let's pray. Oh Lord, help us this day to understand that you do hear us. That you hear us with compassion. That you know what is best for us and that your grace is sufficient. And help us to trust that our little will be turned into God's abundance. And let us once more come to you and be satisfied. It is in your precious name we pray. Amen. Let's stand and respond with our affirmation as we join our voices and our spirits together with these words. We are not alone. We live in God's world. We believe in God who has created and is creating, who has come in Jesus, the Word made flesh, to reconcile and make new, who works in us and others by the Spirit. We trust in God. We're called to be the church, to celebrate God's presence, to love and serve others, to seek justice and resist evil to proclaim Jesus crucified and risen, our judge and our hope, and life and death and life beyond death. God is with us. We are not alone. Thanks be to God. Amen. You may be seated and our ushers should come forward this time and receive our tithes and our offerings.
Stand and sing with us, please.
Grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship and communion of the Holy Spirit be yours this day and each day. Amen.